stage. Welcome to Rex Corner. I've got Doug Brignoli back in his green shirt. <laughs> it was a red shirt before. No, you had a green shirt a couple of uh, shows ago. I oh, like, okay. I like the green. I'll tell you one thing, you had white when you came in, right? Oh, yeah. I wore white once and it didn't work at all. Everything behind me became like a glow. No, I was wearing white because it's hotter than hell out there right it's now. Hot today. And I, was, I knew I was going to sweat up my shirt. I didn't want to come yeah. on here with a sweaty shirt. It's hot today. But I've always told my whole life when I go on camera, don't wear white. And then I wore it one day and I found out why. It, it creates this flash and a glow around you that you yeah. can't even see what's going on. Yeah, right. Well, we're going to talk about variations of squats today and working the legs. Um, it's like we talked about in shoulders. I mean, so many people have bad knees. Right. And bad hips and bad lower, lower back is one of the major complaints in the world today. Right. All the ads you see, lower back pain, lower back pain, lower back pain. Yeah. Well, knees is another one. Yeah. Well, the spine, the lower back, you know, you could argue that the spine almost, you could make an argument that's not fully evolved. I mean, the whole idea you've got these bones that are basically balanced on top of each other. Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, we're supposed to be able to be mobile. So in order to have mobility, you have to have moving parts, right? But that moving parts creates instability. So, but anyway, so I do want to talk about quads and knees, right? Okay. And so we often hear someone say, don't let your knees go over your toes when you squat. Okay. And a lot of people who say that, it would be nice if you said to them, why is that? Well, and I don't think I can do it. Well, because you've got bad knees. I just don't think it would, I'm just saying it wouldn't be in line for me. But what I'm saying is the whole idea that you're not supposed to let your knee go over your toe um, is, is them indirectly saying, no, what we don't want you to do is we don't want that shin, the tibia, to tilt forward so that it goes into perpendicular angle with gravity. Okay. And then you would say, if you were sharp, you'd say, why not? Don't we do that with curls, triceps, side raises? I mean, an exercise isn't an exercise if the operating lever of that muscle isn't crossing resistance perpendicularly somewhere, Yeah. right? It's a neutral lever otherwise. Neutral means it doesn't load the muscle. If your lower leg, if your tibia stays vertical, then your quad will not be loaded, right? It's a neutral lever. Okay. okay so, however, what I want to say is this, and, and we see people loading up the leg press machine with all of these weights. Oh up. my God, we see someone some, standing on it on top of A thousand pounds. Now, first yeah. of all, let me just tell you that because it's not coming down vertically, it's coming down at a 45 mm -hmm. degree angle, you're already losing more than 30% of the load totally. to the angle. Totally. Okay, so you're only getting 70% of it to start with. And then the next thing that happens is you intuitively put your feet high on that metal platform because the higher you put it up there, the more parallel your lower leg is right. with the direction of the sled's movement. That means you're making it a neutral lever. Exactly. That means your quad isn't doing the work, the glute is doing most of the work, right? right? So please, Let's not fall into the trap yeah, of, that, trying, the, the of trying glute, to show off. The glute works when you do that? The glute works, but it's an incomplete movement because you're nowhere near. The glute contracts when it's the, the femur is straight with your body. Okay. So, right? I wouldn't so if you go like this and you're at a 90 degree angle to yeah. your body, you're nowhere near the contraction of the glute. I wouldn't be gluten free? <laughs> You'd be glute free. Well, the reason I ask is because when I was squatting, when I could with my knees and yeah. I can do lunges, I, my butt was always nice and round and tight, and it yeah. still is. But I don't think the squat, the, the leg press, get that part of my body when I do them. Well, it gets the the stretch part, the elongation part of the of the range of motion, right. but it stops literally halfway through. Okay, what about it would be the, it would be doing like curl halfway up or a tricep okay. position. That's one yeah. leg press. What about the other leg press that they have over here at Golds? You lay back on it. It has a, the back will come up or go down, and you put your feet up against. A, 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 a platform, yeah. and when you push, you're pushing your body back and forth, okay? Okay, well, the first thing I would say you is... You know the one I mean? I don't know, but I can imagine it, and I know what you're saying, and it sounds good. Yeah. It sounds better. Um, whether it's this machine or anything else, what you want to do is you don't want to have the seat back so far forward that you're gonna, your knees are going to collide with your chest. Oh, no, I know that. So that's why when you lay it all the way back, that's better because then you give yourself more range of motion if your knees don't collide into your chest. If you're, if you're lying back and your head's here and your body's here and your feet are up in this position, yeah. you're basically in the squatting position on your back. Perfect. And it's got Long something to hold your, your shoulders? Exactly. And right. so and you're pushing the sled back. And I'm trying to visualize what I'm doing because I can't squat because of my knee. I need right. knee replacement. But I can do that. Yeah. And my knees start to shake. They start to quiver yeah. because it's the tendons around them are weak. So I do like 15 What's nice reps. about that is it's not your body weight. It's whatever weight you've chosen. You take, I do like 130. Right. I mean, I've had 250, but right. I do 130. Well, that's the whole point. Is if you can use less than your body weight, you're, you're better off. Right. Okay. So when I do it, though, my mind concentrates as if I'm doing a squat. So when I'm doing that machine, my quads feel it a lot more. Yeah. I'm sure that my butt feels it as well. Yeah. Um, my knee, the first set, we talked about first sets yeah. before, gets really shaky because that right knee is really bad. Yeah. And the tendons are weak. Now, my theory, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong because I don't know. 
I feel that if I do five sets of those, I do 15 reps. By the third set, I'm feeling pretty secure. Mm -hmm. By the fifth set, I'm feeling real good, and those tendons stop shaking. Yeah. So I'm thinking that even if I don't get a knee replacement, that's bone on bone, will those tendons strengthen enough to keep me stable when I walk? Probably not. Why? Because tendons don't strengthen. Then, then why do they get muscles better? strengthen? Then why do they get better as I do it? Well, the, you're getting more circulation. You're getting warmer. Okay. I mean, you can almost get a similar effect by just putting hot packs on your knees. Okay. Once that circulation gets there, then it feels better and better. Right, but, but they don't strengthen to the point where tomorrow they're better off than they were today. No, but 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 my quads get stronger. Yes. Okay. So now that. what I would do if I were you is I would start off with high reps, very short range of motion. Yeah. Itty bitty little movement, 50, 60 reps. Like a pump. Yeah, teeny, teeny movement, Okay. right? Then the next set, a little bit farther range of motion, a little fewer reps. Okay. Then next set, longer range of Same motion, thing. fewer reps. Okay. You can't go wrong with doing itty bitty, just barely bending the knees, 50 reps, 60 reps, because that's gonna get that circulation going, okay. and then every time you, you you do a subsequent set, you just go a little farther. Well, it's also a position of, of, when you stand up from a chair, yeah. it's pushing your legs up to stand up. Right. Now, in my condition, the way my knees are, when I get up from a chair, and I've heard this from guys 30 years old, a lot of you guys out there tell me, oh my God, when I get up from a chair in a, in a restaurant to go to the bathroom, oh, I can hardly stand up for a minute. It takes like 10 seconds to get moving where you can go. Yeah. My legs get stiff, my lower back is stiff, my knees get shaky. All right, this isn't always an age factor. This it has to do with training and a lot of people have told me the same thing I've heard this from four guys last week oh my god I hate to get up from a table when I'm sitting like right now it takes a minute to walk yeah right I'm thinking that that particular leg press might help increase the strength from getting up from a table where I feel yes. better when I do get yes up. I agree okay. as long as you do as I say which is to warm up with a with the short range of motion first right and then go longer and longer and longer. Yeah, I mean, what a lot of people will do is they won't mess with the short range of motion, high reps. They'll go right to the full range of motion, and then it hurts them. Yeah. And then tomorrow they have a hard time getting. Your, well, if you didn't do that, if you started light, and warmed it up, and then increased, increased either the range of motion or the weight. Right. Then you'd be better off. But what I want to say is, if you have the option, and I know not all of you have knee problems, right? So we want to address the knee problems, and we want to address the those that don't have knee problems, but want to make their quads bigger, right? Right? If you can, and your knees don't hurt you, move your feet as low on that platform as you can, right? Because that'll cause your lower leg, the tibia, to cross the, the line of resistance more than when they're up high. You know who believed in that? Vince Geronda. Well, the sissy squat. The sissy squat. And that's what I want to talk about. Okay. Okay. Now, when we do. And the sissy squat, by the way, proves the more perpendicular that lower leg is, the bigger percentage of the resistance is going on your quad. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. So you don't need very much weight on a sissy squat to burn the hell out of your quads. Let me just interrupt you for one second. I had Charlie Faust on here last week. Yeah. Charlie Faust trained at Vince's gym back in the mm -hmm. late 60s. Charlie was a powerlifter and a weightlifter and a wrestler, and he did squats and bench presses. When he came out here and he went to Vince's gym, for all you guys were talking about, Vince Gironda, who was trained a lot of big people and got them in great shape, did not believe in squats and bench presses. Right. So Charlie looked around, where's the squat bar? We don't have one. Right. And so Vince yelled at him. He says, you're not doing them in this gym. And he says, you're fat and everything. He says, listen to me and you'll do it right. So he had Vince put them on a routine with sissy squats. He said, you know what, in four weeks, my leg's up 100% better. Yeah. Now, th this is a very good thing to springboard from. Yeah. Because what I want to say is that those of you out there that want to build your quads, you're thinking up the wrong alley if you're thinking more weight, more weight, more weight. Because more weight on a squat is largely inefficient. By that I mean, if you look at someone who's doing a squat and you're looking at them from the side, and you look at the angle of their lower leg as it goes into a squat, you'll notice that it, it barely breaks 45 degrees. That means you're dealing with a lever that is only 50% active. That means whatever weight you're using on your shoulders is only hitting the quads with about 50% of what it could be hitting it with, mm -hmm. right? But you're getting 100% of it on your spine, mm -hmm. right? So you go, all right, I've got 200 pounds on the bar. I'm not feeling it in the quads. I'm gonna go 300 pounds. So you get that additional 100 pounds pushing straight down on your spine, Yes. right? 400, 500 pounds pushing straight down on that spine, right? Which you probably will regret 20 or 30 years later. Because you'll end up being two inches shorter and your spine will tighten up and it'll affect your legs and your walking. You've seen those, those uh, teeter-totters where yes. you hang upside down? Yes. We'll spend the rest of our lives trying to spread the spine out. I've done that. And the first half of the year is compressing it. I have gravity boots right over there I bought in 1970. I used to hang at the park on the chin-up Yes. Park. Now, if, if I were here telling you don't compress your spine and never mind quad growth, you could tell me to go to hell, right? But I don't, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you can have all the quad growth you want and still not compress your spine. How do you do that? 
It has to do with the direction of resistance. When you're dealing with a free bar squat, you're dealing with a straight down, six o'clock direction line of resistance. That means that because of the angle of your lower leg, you're gonna get about 50% of the load on your quads. Instead, what you could do or should do is use the resistance from a pulley that's about three feet ahead of you and then use that because now what you're doing is you're not putting a metal bar on your spine, it's not pushing down on your vertebrae, yeah. and the line of resistance is crossing your lower leg. I see. So you can use, let's say, 180 pounds on that cable weight stack and be getting the equivalent of 360 pounds on a bar mm -hmm. as far as your quads are concerned. Mm -hmm with zero on your spine. Mm -hmm. That's the way it should be. Don't worry about what it looks like to the other guys in the gym. Everybody wants to look like they're squatting a lot of weight. Yeah. They like seeing the 45 pound weights on there, yeah. clattering, you know. Don't, if you're here for muscle, if you're here for muscle growth, I'm not talking, like if you're a power lifter and you're measuring your squat against someone else's squat, that's another story. But yeah. if you want to build your quads, you're better off with 180 pounds on a cable weight stack pulling you slightly forward. And as you lean back to keep it from pulling you forward, you'll create more of an angle on your lower leg, on your tibia, more load on the quads. Guaranteed, if you try these, some of you haven't tried these, I know. If you try these, you'll be blown away, blown away with how much quad work you get. You won't be able to walk the next few days. I mean, it is amazing with zero, zero, zero load on your spine. How many guys do you see in the gym that load the squat bar up, younger guys, because the older guys can't squat anymore, and they've got all this weight and they're going up and down and huffing and puffing and their legs are tiny. Or they're going to the leg press, they'll put a right. thousand pounds on there. They get up, they have no development in their legs at right. all. It's not that heavy weight that does it. It's, it's, you're, you're building muscle, not It's the angle of resistance right. against the operating lever. That's right. what, look, it's no different than if, you, if you're gonna do a parallel bar dip yeah. for triceps, right? And let's say you weigh 200 pounds, right? And you're doing this, right? You're dealing with a lever that's mostly parallel with resistance. Mm -hmm. That means you're only getting a small percentage of your body weight on your triceps. Mm -hmm. Try getting on your back and doing a pair of dumbbells like this, and you say, boy, I can hardly use 30 pounds. Exactly. Why is that? Because you're using a 100% lever. Yeah. And who cares what it looks like? Don't think just because you're dipping with, a, with your entire body weight that your tricep is doing it. Right. Your tricep isn't doing it, it's your front deltoid, it's your pecs, it's everything else that's helping, right? If you want to build the triceps, don't worry about what it feels like and don't worry about what the number actually is. Worry about how perpendicular that operating lever is to resistance and whether or not you're actually feeling it in the muscle. All right. And not straining any joints. Leg extensions and leg curls? Leg extensions and leg curls are fine. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Them. Yeah. Okay. So They're good. That'll build the quad. That's all you need. Sounds and by good. the way, your quads don't know the difference between a leg extension, a quad, a hack squat, a know. sissy squat. All they know is they're, they're having to pull on that lower leg bone with a certain amount of force. Right, right. So it's a duplication of effort. If you're doing leg extension, squats, hack squats, leg press, just do one or the other. And You, you, you had mentioned that I did arms today, I did curls. I did some barbell curls, which yeah. I hardly ever do because it hurts my wrist, but I did the easy bar. I did the sets of 21s, you know. Oh, seven, yeah, yeah, seven, 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 seven yeah. yeah. I did like three or four sets with yeah. 40 pounds. Yeah. I felt it. Yeah. And then I went over and I just did some preacher benches with the cables, and I went 50, 60 pounds to like 20 reps, yeah. three sets, and I was done. I said, I don't need to do anything else. Yeah. You know, I could have gone over done concentration, right. but right. we had talked about that. Right. You go so far and then you're done. You don't need to add everything else. You know, I do want to say something about, you know, you heard me just say that your quads are no difference between a leg extension and a squat. Yeah. Of course, your glutes do. Yeah. Right? When you're doing a leg extension, it's only quads. Yeah. When you're doing a squat or, you know, a hack squat or a leg press, your glutes also participate. Right. As does your lower back to some degree and things right. like that. So what I do is I have a compound leg day and an isolation leg day and a compound and I, I alternate, right? Every time I work legs, I do one or the other. So when I do isolation day, I do a glute exercise. I get you. I do a quad exercise, I do a hamstring, I do, so I do each in muscle that would participate in a squat separately. And then on the compound days when I do my stiff legged, not stiff legged, but slightly bent knee deadlifts for the glutes, and a hamstring stretch. You don't build much much hamstring with a, a stiff legged deadlift. Yeah. Um, but that's when I do my squat. And by the way, when you're doing that cable squat, it conflicts, interferes less with a regular bent over, you know, deadlift, as compared to if you try to do squats and deadlifts on the same day. That would yeah, be too that's much. A, that's too much yeah. to do. Well, that's good information, Doug. It's all about the angles. Yes, it is. I just want to add one more thing. I did this on our last show. I want you to go to rickgracenoriginals.com and check out my Gold's Gym signature shirt, my uh, the Golden Era Bodybuilding. I have Muscle Beach shirt. I have all kinds of tank tops. I love those things. Narrowback tank tops. Beautiful colors. Good colors, and you can order direct on my website, and they'll ship out the same day. It's it's a, a good selection of shirts. And be one of the only ones to have actually signature on the shirt that I designed in 1970. Absolutely. And yeah. don't let the Gold's Gym publicity <laughs> just talk about this. 
fool you with this kid that did this all this stuff. He's murdered in the church. Yeah, it had nothing to do with the shirt. He just happened to pull it out of the uh, the closet and put it on. Obviously, it doesn't even yeah. work out. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, right. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's not a good thing, but then we didn't have anything to do with that. He was irrational in more ways than one. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Thank you for watching Rick's Corner. Thank, Thank you, Doug, for, for being pleasure. here. always being here. And uh, we'll see you next time, so stay tuned for more. RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.